Okay, so you ready? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, ready. Yeah. So, so if we go to the the personal PC first. So, sir, can you first tell uh, who your first name and what you do at Citrix? Uh, my name's Tom, and I'm a test engineer at Citrix. Okay, and now we are looking at uh, Xen client. Yep. So at the moment we're viewing the the kind of home PC virtual machine that's running on Zen client, and we can flick between this home PC and we can flick to a second virtual machine that's running on Zen client, and this is a, a corporate managed PC. If we look at the the Zen client um, administration tool, we can actually see that the corporate image is synchronized with a server side component called the sequencer. And this sequencer is something that you can use to back up the corporate virtual machine on Zen Client. You can also use it to, to keep, um, to push out an image from the sequencer down to the Zen Client. So you can actually maintain a standard kind of corporate VM on a Zen Client laptop. But even though you have it on the hard drive, you can update it uh, once in a while if, you're, if, it, if it's needed. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, so obviously any changes you make to the corporate PC, and potentially you're out of sync with the synchronizer, but you can actually, I believe you can keep, you can preserve those changes in like sort of a difference disk kind of arrangement. But, okay. um, yeah, probably need to check the Zen client guys about that. But, um, so what you can do, if you're viewing your personal PC, yeah. you can see the receiver here has actually indexed all of the applications on the corporate VM. So that's yeah. actually an experimental feature for Zen Client V1. Okay. But we can actually subscribe to one of these applications that is running on the other VM. And then we can launch um, one of these applications that's running on the other VM. So I just double check. I think I subscribed to OneNote there. So I should okay. now be able to launch OneNote. So we just double click to launch. But wouldn't you normally keep them separate? I mean, you, you wouldn't normally launch uh, these corporate applications from the home. That's home the good image. thing. So the actual the application here is running on the other virtual machine. Ah, oh, okay. So it's so not, not, not running on this, this no, virtual machine. That's right. Okay. It's actually running on the corporate thing here. So you can actually see the same window. Yeah, so okay. this one window yeah. is being blended yeah. into my corporate. So I, I still have the look and feel of my corporate, of my, yeah. my personal environment. I'm now accessing a work application. The work yeah. application is completely isolated from my, my personal environment here, so there's no danger of, of okay. me accidentally doing something um, undesired to the corporate okay. PC. And uh, yeah, that, that's great. Yeah. Okay, and uh, can you still show the uh, the corporate uh, desktop? Or how does it look like if you would go, go totally go over there? So it's this one, yeah? yeah. Okay. Okay. So they actually, if, if we go back to the administration tool, we have some other experimental features to pass through 3D graphics support. Okay. So we've done that for the home PC. So you can actually see if we go to the home PC. Yeah. This is um, interfacing with the graphics hardware of the laptop. So okay. you can see we're actually running a, um, a 3D game here that needs 3D graphics hardware. Okay. So, so does it support... Uh, uh Direct 3D and OpenGL, or how does it? I don't know the details on that, I'm afraid. Okay, um, but anyway, you can run 3D graphics and. But yeah, this, this is without a 3D graphics card, you wouldn't be able to do this. Yeah. This is actually, um, with the, the, the help from Intel, this is what we have so far. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Pleasure.